Today, New Zealanders are working more but earning less in real terms. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, interesting data from Statistics New Zealand today on employment and wages. They show that New Zealand's unemployment unexpectedly rose from a record low in the second quarter, but wages rose at the fastest pace in 14 years, though still well below inflation. Suggesting the central bank may need to keep raising interest rates aggressively to tame inflation. The jobless rate climbed to 3.3% from 3.2% in the first quarter, which was the lowest level since records began back in 1986. Economists expected a decline to 3.1%. Employment was unchanged from the previous three months, and the underutilisation rate was 9.2% compared to 9.3% in March 2022. Measures of spare labour market capacity have fallen over the year and remained low for several quarters, continue to show a tight labour market, said Stats New Zealand. The unemployment rate for women was 3.5% in the June 2022 quarter, compared with 3.4%, which was revised, by the way, last quarter. The unemployment rate for men stayed at 3.1% and remains equal to the lowest rate on record. Underutilisation and unemployment rates have fallen over the year for Maori, Pacific and Asian ethnic groups, as well as younger people, they said. The underutilisation rate for Maori was 13.4%, down from 17.5% last year, and the unemployment rate for Maori was 5.5%, down from 7.8% last year. Both of those are unadjusted. The falling unemployment rate for Maori is part of a broader downward trend over the past decade. In the June 2022 quarter, the total seasonally adjusted number of hours usually worked rose 0.5% to reach 107.5 million, despite the number of people employed remaining unchanged over the quarter at 2.82 million. The quarterly increase in usual hours worked came from people working more hours rather than changes in employment levels. And the seasonally adjusted number of people working full-time, that means 30 hours or more per week, increased by 22,000 over the quarter. And the number in part-time employment fell by 20,000. The seasonally adjusted number of hours actually worked in the June 22 quarter was 95 million, up 0.8% over the quarter. Total usual hours and actual hours worked increased over the quarter as more people worked full-time, even though the number of people off sick was higher than we usually see during winter months. And annually, the number of people who were away from work for a full week due to sickness, illness or injury nearly doubled up to 55,000. Wage inflation, measured by the Labour Cost Index, or the LCI, was 3.4% in the year ended June 2022. That's the fastest since 2008 and up from 3% in the year ended March 2022, while average ordinary time hourly earnings rose 6.4%. The June quarter had the largest increase in LCI salary and wages rates since late 2008, and over the year, a steadily increasing number of wages have been raised to better match market rates, as well as attracting or retaining staff, Stats New Zealand said. Nearly two-thirds of roles surveyed in the LCI saw an increase in ordinary time wage rates in the year ended June 2022, that's the highest level since this series began back in 1993. The LCI's primary measure of wage inflation adjusts for changes in employment quality. Therefore, employees receiving promotions or moving to different roles don't affect this measure of wage inflation. Average ordinary time hourly earnings rose 6.4% in the year ended June 2022 to reach $36.97. And they said the LCI shows wage increases not seen over the last 10 years. While wages, though, have lifted over the past year, annual consumer price inflation has exceeded annual wage inflation over the same period. The Consumer Price Index, the CPI, increased 7.3% in the year to June 2022. And the annual inflation at 7.3% is a 32-year high. The adjusted LCI measures 
changes in the cost of labor for businesses. So this comparison contrasts changes in labor costs with changes in consumer prices. It's not a direct comparison of wages and cost of living. Average total hour earnings, including overtime growth, as measured by their other surveys, was spread across industries. Annually, the industries that have the largest impact on national wages growth were manufacturing up 8.2% to $35.25, Healthcare and social assistance up 6.7% to 38.48, and professional, scientific, and technical services and administrative and support services up 5.5% to $42.27. These industries are all relatively large, as well as having strong wage increases, causing larger impacts on national changes than smaller industries with bigger annual increases. Those industry groups were also significant contributors to national LCI wage inflation. Annually, private sector wage inflation was 3.4%, while public sector wage inflation was 3%. And private sector wages also grew more strongly in their other surveys, with private sector total hourly earnings up 7.1% to $35.24, while public sector earnings rose 4.6% to $44.19. Labour shortages and capacity constraints are contributing to soaring inflation in New Zealand, prompting the Reserve Bank to rapidly remove monetary stimulus. The RBNZ is tipped to undertake a fourth consecutive half percentage rate hike later this month, taking the official cash rate to 3% as it seeks to curb demand in the economy. The Kiwi dollar fell after the employment report and earlier on today was at 62.34 US cents. That's down from 62.55 cents beforehand. While the Reserve Bank doesn't have a numerical goal for employment growth or the jobless rate, it has said employment is above the maximum sustainable level that it's required to achieve. At 7.3% in the second quarter, inflation is also well in excess of the 1-3% to band the central bank targets. And the Reserve Bank's policy tightening has driven down property prices and eroded business and consumer confidence, raising the possibility of a recession, but the labour market remains tight because of an absence of migrant workers. The border only fully reopened this week, more than two years after it was closed at the outset of the pandemic. The point I want to make is I think the New Zealand economy is a very interesting petri dish of reversing monetary policy and seeing what happens. They started earlier, of course, in New Zealand, and we are now starting to see the unemployment rate rise, expected to go higher ahead. But the bottom line is this that whilst wages are increasing somewhat, they are still, in real terms, not meeting the inflation costs, so real earnings continue to be eroded. And that has been a trend over many weeks and months, both in New Zealand and elsewhere. So the question you've got to ask yourself is, with such high inflation, will wages go on rising, or will the pressures more broadly across the economy put a break on that? Meantime, households continue to go backwards. No wonder the consumer confidence levels are so low. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.